Okay, so we're going to talk about key signatures. So key signatures are something that we need to know quite well for the harp. Um, because before we can play it in any key on the harp, we need to think about what levers we're using. And we need to think um, what order are the levers in. Sometimes we've got none up at all. And then sometimes we've only got one or sometimes we have all of them up. But how, how do we know that? How do we know what key we are in? And how do we know what levers we should put up? Because there's a particular order which the keys work. And today I'm going to try and explain and maybe give us some useful little hints to help us think about our key signatures. And this gets especially important once you get to sort of grade three level and above where you get a lot of keys that you need to know from memory. So it can take some time to get used to all of these keys and trying to memorise them, but I'm going to try and simplify it a little bit for us today. So something that's really useful, um, and this, this is used, you know, across lots of different instruments, is this thing here we call the circle or the cycle of fifths. Okay, and it's called the circle of fifths because as you can see, it's, it's a circle but also it goes up in fifths. So each of these keys that we have at the side are going up in fifths, so five notes up from each other. So the circle of fifths are a really handy thing to know because our keys go up in fifths, okay? Now, with the harp, we are a little bit more limited, I suppose, maybe than some other instruments in what keys we can play in. Um, and it depends what our harp is tuned to, what, how many different keys um, and what, what keys we can play in. So for us, we're actually not going to be using um, any of these keys these four keys down here, okay, we can actually use them and the key that our heart is tuned to. So we are starting here in the cycle of fifths. This is E flat major, okay, which is what our heart is tuned to. Yeah, so there's three flats. So E flat major looks like that on sheet music if you're looking for it. So it's got three flats, B, E and A flat. Yeah, which is why when we're tuning the harp, we need to tune the B, E and A flat differently. Yeah, we need to make sure those are flat notes. Okay, so that's E flat and E flat is very simple for us because all we need is, well, we don't need any of the levers up for that one. So all of the levers are down in this key. So we're going all the way from E flat major and the range of keys we can play up to is goes right over here. If we go clockwise round and we can go up to E major, which is, as we can see, a sharp key. It's got four sharps in it. Okay, so that's, um, that's all the keys that we need to know, really. Um, besides, obviously, minor keys, which we will talk a little bit about later on. But for now, we're just going to focus on the majors. So... As we said already, E flat major, no levers needed. Um, it's got three flats in it. Now, as well as E flat major, 
we can see here, before we get to C major, we have two other keys that are also flat keys. So they've got this little sort of slanty B sign, um, which means flat. Okay, so we go up from E. Okay, so on your harp, if you go up a fifth from E, you'll get to B. And B is the next, B flat major is the next key up. And it's called B flat major because it still has a B flat in it. But once we get to B flat major, a little trick that's useful for us to know on the harp is we will then put the lever, we only need one lever up for B flat major. We're, we're gonna put the one below B. So whatever key we're in, we put the one below the, the, the tonic, yeah, the main note in the key. So in B flat, that's going to be A. So we need to put our A levers up and then that's us in B flat. And B flat looks like this written down. So it's got a B flat and an E flat. Okay, so the only difference between that and E flat major is we now no longer have A flat. Okay, so we've got A natural now. The last flat key that we need to know is F major. So we go up a fifth from B. So if you look at your harp, if you're on B, if you go up a fifth, you then get to F. And that's our next key up. Okay. Now, F, the note below F is E. So you, you don't take the A's down every time you're going up a key, going up a fifth. You're adding levers on, yeah? You're not taking any away. So A's still up, we've still got A natural, but now we also have E natural. So we need to put all the E levers up and that's us in F major. Okay, so the only flat, there's only one flat in F major and that is B. It's on the B line, okay? So B's still got to stay down for that. Then, after that, we're finished with our flat keys. We're gonna go to C major. Now you'll see C major is quite different to the rest because it doesn't have any flats or sharps on it. So we know a piece of music is in C major if we can't see any flats or sharp symbols at the beginning of the piece. So again, but we can still use the same methods that we used before. So when we get to C major, we're gonna put the note below C up as well as E and A. So we're gonna put B up for C major. Okay, now C major is one that we're probably quite familiar with already. We have used it a lot, especially in the beginning stages. So it's a good one to memorize. See, if you can memorize, you know, the E flat has no levers, and then for, it, you go up a fifth, you put the, you know, the note below, the note below the, the tonic note of the key. Okay, go up another fifth, put the note below the tonic note of that key. Then you're, you've got your flat keys covered. Once you know C major and you know it's E, A and B levers up, because those ones are the ones that are originally flat when we're in E flat major. So when we put those ones up, they then become natural. Okay, so there's no flats or sharps 
in C major. And once you memorise C, then it's easier as well to then move on to the sharp keys, okay? Which you are just adding a sharp note when you go up a fifth each time. Okay, so you've got C major, then we go up a fifth from C. You can use your harp to do this. So going up a fifth from C, one, two, three, four, five, get to G major. And G major, you need to put the note below that up because it has an F sharp, just like that. So that's what it looks like when it's written down. So we put our Fs up and that's us in G major. A fifth up from G is D and the note below D is C. We put our Cs up to get into D major. Okay, and G major, sorry, D major, as we can see, F and C, two sharps. Then we go up a fifth from D, D to A, and we're adding another lever on. We add the note below A, because we've got a G sharp, so we put G up. And that's us in A major, okay? So A major, we've got three sharps, F, C, and G, yep. So remember, you're always, you're not taking any levers away as you go up the cycle of fifths. You are adding levers on each time. So after A major, we go up a fifth and we get to our last key that we can use. And this is E major. Okay, in E major, the note below E is D. So the Ds go up as well. And then that's us in E major. So there's something really interesting there because when we have all of our levers up, we are in E major. Yeah, when you have all the levers down in the off position, we're in E flat major. So both of them are E keys, but one's flat and one of them is E natural major. So that has covered all of the, the major, the major keys. So handy little hints there to remember. Remember that E flat major is a good starting point for your flat keys going up a fifth. Yeah, and putting the the lever up below the tonic note. Okay, then for our sharp keys, it's good just to memorize C major. It's got no flats or sharps, but you need your E, A and B levers up. And then after that, every time you're going up a fifth above C and so on, we're adding again, the lever below the tonic note of the key that we're in to get into that key. And that's a really handy little thing to know. Now, I did say I would briefly talk about our minor keys. Now, on this sheet, which I will also send out, the, the cycle of fifths, beneath each of these um, key signatures, we've also got in the middle, the minor relative. So every, every major key has a minor relative, okay? So every single key that you can set your harp in can either be in a major or a minor key, right? Okay, and this is something that we do need to know about as well as we progress in our harp playing. The easiest way to work out what the relative minor is, if you're going from the major key, is it's three steps down from your major key. So right now I'm tuned to E, E major, yeah? If I go a third down, three steps down, one, two, three, I get to C, okay? But in this case, it's C is sharp, 
So it would need to be C sharp minor. Yeah. So it's always three steps down from the major to get to your minor. And that's how you can figure out how to get into your minor keys. So that is just a little bit about key signatures. Hopefully it's helped you to think about them differently and helped you to um, maybe recognise them more easily. It does take, still take some practice to memorise them. So just keep at it and eventually you will get, get used to your key signatures.